Every night, when you're sound asleep, something strange happens. Not only do your eyeballs keep moving even though your eyes are closed, but the world keeps moving too. Somewhere far away, kids you'll never meet are climbing trees, riding bikes, and melting garter snakes while you're fast asleep. Maybe that's what bugs my brother Pete. While he's stuck in bed, the world keeps going on without him. It's as if millions of kids got a head start in a race, and Pete never had a chance to catch up. Which was exactly the way our mom wanted to keep it. That's why every night at precisely nine o'clock, A Wrigley Nightly Ritual begins. Honey, it's bedtime. Why? Because it's nine o'clock, and that's what time growing boys go to sleep. Mom's first reason for making Pete go to bed was always the easiest to counter. After all, what is there, some international chart that dictates what time all 10-year-olds should go to bed? But why nine o'clock? Why not 9-11 or 9-42? Uh, do we have to go through this every night? I just want to know why. Because 9 o'clock is your bedtime. But why? And that's when she'd say the six deadly words that make every kid's guts boil. Because I said so. That's why. And just like that, it's over. But one night, as I watched my brother climb the stairs to his bedroom cell, I knew that it was more than just time for bed. It was time for Pete to shatter adults' grisly grip of power on the world and free kids everywhere. <laughs> After 10 years, four months, and 27 days, my brother Pete had reached his breaking point. The injustice of bedtime was no longer acceptable to him. Pete was convinced that the bedtime rule was part of the international adult conspiracy, which operated in secret and kept adults in control. Well, I'll tell you what I do, Nancy. I buy the 2%, and I tell them it's whole milk. They never know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what they don't know can't hurt them. And even though Pete discovered why his cereal tastes like sludge, the bedtime rule remained a mystery. One more nine o'clock bedtime, and Pete would have imploded. He needed a scheme, and he needed it fast. And Pete being Pete, he knew just where to look. He unleashed his plot on an unsuspecting world the very next night during a game of flashlight tag in our backyard. Gotcha! As Pete zeroed in on his final victim. Say goodnight, Clem! Goodnight, Clem. <laughs> It's nine o'clock, Pete. That's enough for tonight. It's bedtime. Pete knew it was now or never. No! 
know what, honey? No, I'm not going to bed. I don't feel like going to bed. Oh, don't be silly, pumpkin. It's wet out here. Come on, let's go. I said no. I said yes. And I don't like the tone in your voice, young man. Love it. The battle lines had been drawn. Mom knew that the next move was hers, so her brain kicked into strategic mom defense mode. Would she try reverse psychology, a maneuver she was famous for, or would she stall, bribe him, or go for the jugular and bring dad into it? You want to stay up late? Fine. She went with the old standby. And how late would that be? 9.15? 9.30? Later. Oh, really? Well, why bother coming inside at all? Why don't you just stay up all night? OK. Mom was stunned. Pete had called her bluff. And Mom knew right away that the only way out of her pickle was with the deadly double bluff. Why stop there? How about two nights? How about 11? 11 days without sleep? Yep, I'm going to break the world record. Is that so? Well, have a nice time. Pete had won, and his master plan was quickly made clear to claim for kids everywhere the Ghibli's world record for sleeplessness, set in 1962 by 56-year-old housewife Bertha Van Houten. If Pete could pull it off, he'd prove to mom and the entire known world that when it came to bedtime, he could play by his own rules. Pete's friends were so inspired by the idea of staying up 11 days past their bedtime that they too decided to go for the record. But what none of them realized was that they were playing right into the razor sharp claws of the international adult conspiracy. My uh, lippy's gonna learn a little lesson. You just watch. 11 days? I give them 11 hours, tops. That choice, I gotta hand it to her. I never would have thought of this one. <laughs> of course not. No parent would. No parent could, because a plan so brilliant, so perfectly perfect as Pete's, could only have come from those who knew the bitter taste of being powerless. Clem, Natasha, Mort, Purvis. Libby, Pink Guy, and Artie! The strongest man in the world. <laughs> we are the Nightcrawlers. Ooh, snappy name, my little Viking son. Uh, happy. <laughs> you know why we're here. And you know what we got to do. 11 days. No sleep, not even naps. Think you can handle it, pink eye? Claim it, Purvis. We're a team. Something in your eye? Nah, I'm fine. Tasha's right. We gotta stick together. Break the record, you need a witness. No witness, no record. Get it? Get it, got it, good, get, grab it. <clears throat> cake. This is gonna be cake. Let's do it! Do it they did. They were sleepless suburban commandos who ruled the night and turned it into day. After Artie showed them how to skip stones on Neptune, the Nightcrawlers got their second wind and rode it. Whoa! 
Mississippi, two South Dakota, three million. But around 2.47 a.m., Somnus, the mighty god of sleep, sang a thumb-sucking lullaby that KO'd Purvis. <laughs> While Purvis and the rest of the world slumbered, the night crawlers crawled on. And soon the crickets that usually lulled Cranston Street to sleep were replaced by a different sound. But around 18 hours later, the nightlife began to take its toll. On parents. Well, Stan, I'm not really worried. I, I mean, I wouldn't really call it worried. It's just, oh gosh, is it really 11 o'clock? Relax, Nancy. They can't possibly last much longer. I mean, Purvis didn't even make it five hours. You know, I, I never liked that kid. Any minute now, my Libby's gonna come walking through that door. Any minute now. She's 10 years old for crying out loud. How much longer can she stay awake? It was obvious that adults just didn't get it. Their kids weren't just 10 year olds, they were night crawlers. Go fish, go fish! <laughs> go fishing! Libby figured out that every time she felt sleepy, all she had to do was glance at the sun. Achoo! And she'd blow the snooze right out of it. <sighs> I hung it for a while. See, if I pull real tight, my eyes can't close. Good idea, huh? Meanwhile, Pink Eye opted for Fig Newly power. The bite-sized Newlies had double the sugar of regular cookies, meaning, of course, twice the sugar rush. And while Pink Eye spent her days ricocheting around the neighborhood like an 84-pound pinball, Artie spent his nights boogalooing to the beat of a Crud Star 2000, the portable AM-FM radio he borrowed from Purvis's bike. Not only did the music keep them awake, but Artie discovered that at night, the Krebstar picked up radio stations from as far away as New Orleans, Old Tucson, and Dusseldorf. But just when the night crawlers were finding the perfect rhythm to keep them going one more night... Double, my troubadours! Double! Go! Danger was upon them. Except for Purvis's thumb-sucking sidewalk snooze, the first 96 hours of the Nightcrawler's mission had gone perfectly. But then, during hour 97, calamity struck. It was Pinka, crashing from the worst sugar rush since Glenn Hoover ate 17 candy apples at the fireman's field day. There was nothing they could do because everyone knew the terrible truth. Like a fish flopping on a dock, Pink Eye was a goner. So young, so brave, <laughs> so sleepy. <laughs> Sadly done, Pinkily. The loss of another denizen of the night hit the night crawlers like a sucker punch. a wonderful morning. Dawn was better. That's nice. Bye-bye. And even though it seemed like the standoff would go on forever, the pressure was finally starting to get to the grown-ups. Because they knew if the bedtime rule were put to bed, it could start a domino effect that would ripple all the way down Cranston Street. What do they want next, Fred? Huh? A ban on cauliflower at dinner? Worse. A mandate against making their beds. <clears throat> oh, I need my bromide. I know my Morty. You know what you want to do? Drive. Still, the international adult conspiracy was as sneaky as ever. 
especially Mom, who took up a sudden interest in astronomy. What are you looking at? <gasps> oh! Oh! Ah! Uh, well, I'll be the rings of Jupiter. It was clear that the mind-warping effects of 164 hours without sleep were getting to everyone. It's my turn to hold the radio! How come Artie always holds the radio? Wake up, Petunia! Don't zonk out on me! Wake up! Uh, why is the grass so wet? Is it raining? Huh? Is it? I haven't seen it rain, so why is the grass so wet? Stop the hammering! Will somebody please tell him to stop the hammering? Oh, God, no. Oh. Where's Libby? <laughs> Libby, Libby, Libby was won't. lost. Somehow, she'd wandered into Mrs. Chikuti's backyard and couldn't get out. All she needed was one solar-powered sneeze, and she'd snap right out of it. Unfortunately, Libby had one huge problem. The sun was on a lunch break. The stare-down went on for hours. But I guess Mr. Sun was feeling a little logy after lunch. He never came out to play. And in the end... Wimp. Mr. Sun wimped out. They found her around dinner time, catching Z's under Mrs. Chikuti's bird bath. You're next, kid. You're going down. Wax my nose hair. Suddenly, Adults were gaining the upper hand because by nights eight and nine, the night crawlers started dropping like flies. <laughs> oh no! Artie, help! Oh no! Oh my! Oh. Don't look, boy! Don't look! Just once. Then, there were two. It all came down to the final night. If Pete and Artie could hold on for nine more hours, the balance of power in the Wrigley household might shift forever. The stakes had never been higher. For Cranston Street and for the world. Face boy, sleep. It's for the puny. It's on pipe. I, I, I gotta keep moving, Artie. Yes, and I challenge you, my friend, to a game of tag <laughs> of the flashlight variety. With the Krebstar 2000 <laughs> pumping fresh funk into his cortex, Artie was ready for action. I don't believe you can catch me, for I. I'm super freaky. <laughs> Artie easily outmaneuvered the sleepy Pete with his patented slide and glide technique. Come on, Classy! Until. Say goodnight, Artie. The strongest yeah, man. Uh, and uh, the uh, 
Come on, Artie. <sighs> Wake up, Artie! Wake up! Come on! Come on, Artie! Artie was in super sleep. Wake up, Artie! Come a dream on, state reserved you. only for superheroes. And as Artie bit the dust, so did my brother Pete's dream. It's over. He had come so close. There were only 53 minutes left, but Pete was all out of winds. His energy had been sucked dry. And worst of all, he had no more witnesses. I am a night crawler! No! No! Where's our feet? Okay, pumpkin? Yeah. Never been better. So, what are you waiting for? Aren't you gonna rub it in? Is that what you think I wanna do? Make you feel bad? Well, I don't. Pete, you're my little boy. And I make rules for you because I love you. Mom, what? You know, I guess, I guess I'm just afraid you're growing up too fast. It's not like I can help it. Yeah, me neither. What, did you think I was gonna stay 10 years old forever? So now what? Well, what do you say we settle on new bedtime? You bluffing. How about 10 o'clock? 10.30. Okay, 10.15. 11. OK, 10.15 is good. Where are you going? It's bedtime, right? Yeah, well, you still have 49 minutes. Forget it. My last witness is in La La Land. No, she's not. Tag, you're it. <laughs> so that's how the battle over bedtime finally ended. After 11 days and nights, both Pete and Mom understood that change is inevitable. Whether you're talking about rules, records, or 10-year-old boys. And even though the world will keep moving and changing without us, on one special night, my brother Pete scored a victory in the name of kids everywhere. And for a while, at least, he could sleep soundly.